I just want to know how many brought the ladle. Or did you bring a spoon? Ladle, right? He had to be here last Sunday. He would, have, he would know what I'm talking about. You could either give with a, a spoon, that's a little bit, you know, or you could give with a two cup ladle. That's a lot. Because God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. And you know, and I was thinking about it. I, I'm almost hesitant to. I, I want to share this very quick verse of scripture because it's been so abused you know and uh, I'll share it in a second but before this particular ver uh, verse of scripture in the gospel of Luke, Jesus talks about loving your enemies, he, he just talks about loving your enemies, then he talks about not judging people and, and then he says and he says, give and it shall be given to you in good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over Amen. and then right after that when you get to verse 7 it talks about the centurion servant. And, and it goes like this. Now when he concluded all the sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered a Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die. So when he heard about Jesus, he sent his elder, he sent elders to the of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. And when, he, when they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying that the one whom he should do this was deserving. For he loves our nation and built a synagogue. Now that, people will say, I've heard preachers preach that, you know, when you give, that opens the door for Jesus to bless you. Well, Jesus wants to bless you anyway. But, and I, so that used to bother me, but I was, I was praying about it. The Lord says, it's a matter of the heart. Yeah. This centurion's heart was for the nation of Israel. So out of his heart, he built them a synagogue. Yeah. So he must have been a pretty wealthy guy to do that, you know. But he built them a synagogue, and that causes Jesus' attention. So when... Jesus looks at your heart when you give in every any offering, whenever you give, whatever you do, he's looking at your heart. Yeah. And that's what causes him to move when he sees the heart. <coughs> Amen? Amen? The heart of why you're doing it. Am I doing it because I need to do it? I'm supposed to do it? That's the rules? Or am I doing it because, man, I really love Jesus? Am I going to be a ladle giver or a spoon giver? Amen. So, with that, we're going to receive our offering this morning. And uh, I was just thinking about that because I, I heard one preacher teach, you know, and he was just trying to get an offering out of people. And how, you know, if you give, Jesus is going to, you know, tonight you're going to go home and find a $1,000 check in your mailbox and all this other stuff. And, that, and that's not, you know. Don't, doesn't always work that way, okay? Right. But God loves a cheerful giver, and, and it just shows the condition of our heart. So what happens, people will give money because they're waiting for that check to come in the mail. And, and their motive for doing it is not right. And you say amen? But when your motive's right, you could expect God to move in your behalf. Amen? Praise the Lord. So let's pray. Let's receive our offering this morning. Father God, and you only got two more Sundays before, you know, if you want a good big old tax claim it, you know, just give, okay? Anyway, Father God, we praise you and we thank you for every opportunity to give into the kingdom of God. And Lord, you, you know that as we give, it's going to produce for the kingdom of God, it's going to produce for us, Father. Lives will be set free. The kingdom of Satan will go forth. And Father God, all our needs. Did I say kingdom of Satan will... Stop me, stop. Okay. All right. Nothing like getting corrected, right? Well, it was about Satan. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the kingdom of Satan will be stopped. I meant the kingdom of God will go forward, but it got messed up there. That's okay. And Lord, we just praise you for it and thank you for it, that all our needs will be met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Lord, you promised that it would come back to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Amen. You may receive the offering. This 
I said, so you think I can walk the other, the other part of the blood pressure pill? He said, no. So, all right. <laughs> but it's a good report. You know, I mean, God is good. I, you know, and I've had people tell me I'm nuts. And I looked at him, I said, I guess that olive oil and coconut oil stuff really works. He goes, huh? I said, well, in your office, you had an article in a magazine that said how coconut oil is poison. Again, if it is, I should be dead. I said, but I'm not. My blood pressure is okay. Everything is fine. My, my, my triglycerides are low. My good cholesterol is through the ceiling. I says, so that blows you. I says, Doc, you need to like read the information I sent you. <laughs> Instead of what the American Heart Association is telling you we need to eat. Because what they tell you we need to eat, if that was so good, why are there so many people in your office? Because the medicine isn't working. Amen? Amen. Just wanted to give you that. That's a good report. Amen. Got to stick to it, though. I was with somebody like that. I said, bro, you just can't like eat steak and think you're going to eat corn with it because you're going to die if you do that. All right? Anyway, now the announcements. We have any first-time visitors here today? This is the first time you've been here, raise your hand. No, well, praise God, you're all here. Good. You know the vision of the church? It's a vision of our church is to build family, strengthen lives by help leading people. You know, we want to lead you into a, re a growing relationship with Jesus. So it'll help you find your purpose in life. Every one of us have a purpose. And when you do the Word of God, you'll find your purpose. Amen? Uh, we also, again, check, check us out on YouTube, AGCTV1 and Pastor Anthony Storino. Subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends. Do all that. If uh, I, I know it's, we don't even have to record all the announcements anymore. Oh, yeah, we can. We're, uh, we're not live streaming anymore on Facebook because we've found out that uh, it causes too much confusion. And uh, what? 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 yeah, people don't come to church. Want the truth? Uh, all right, just so you know. But you say, well, what if I'm homesick? Watch it tonight on YouTube. Because we're going to get it on YouTube within 24 hours. But every pastor I know has been live streaming and they're complaining that their numbers in their church are going down. I said, sure, they can sit home and watch television. And they don't have to come to church. And in order to be viable, the Word of God specifically tells us in Hebrews... Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together, as is the habit of many. People get in a habit of not coming to church because we make it too convenient for them. They need to be here, need to be part of what's going on. Fellowshipping with people. Get, I hear people say, well, I don't know them. I say, when's the last time you were in church? Oh, about three weeks ago. Well, that's why you don't know them. So there's a lot of people out there this morning that are like in shock right now. Because they're looking for us. And we're not there. Praise God. <laughs> they said, Pastor, don't get up and say that. I said, I'm going to get up and say it because it's not on. I, I was going to do it the last live stream. They said, don't do that. Okay, all right, I won't. But I'm telling you that's why. Okay? But you can always watch it on AGC TV or Pastor Anthony Storino on YouTube. It's there all the time. Okay? Uh, the Christmas tree presents from the Giving Tree are due in today. Praise the Lord. Sunday, December 30th is birthdays and anniversaries they're going to be celebrated and we're going to do a new membership class we're going to do it in march 31st we're just giving you a heads up if you've been coming you haven't gone through membership class this would be a great time for you to go there uh, uh i don't see joanne and tony so there must not be a meeting today was that, was that from last week oh, okay all right now here's the good news how many people in here raise your hand go out for breakfast or lunch after church? Once in a while. If you goo once in a while, right, okay, let's not get technical. Great. Because starting today, we're going to have, if you're going to go out to the diner and spend 15 or 20 bucks, spend it here. So you can be a blessing to your church. And you can fellowship with other believers and get to know one another. Yes. Can you say amen? amen? Especially when visitors are here. It's great. Grab them, bring them in, get them a slice of pizza. Today, here's what we got. We have the pizza. It's a dollar a slice, two dollars a slice. 
We also have chicken wings. Okay, you get 10 chicken wings for $7, which is a steal. Because if you go any other place, they're like $12. And uh, we have espresso. Got that thing working again. $1.50, the espresso's not free, okay? $1.50 for a single and $2 for a double. Don't ask us to make you cappuccino. We we don't have no baristas here, all right? Uh, so it is a dollar clean can, uh, water is 75 cents. All right? So it's just a great time to sit around and fellowship with one another. Amen? Yeah. Instead of going and giving the world your money, mm. you can put it into the church. Yes. And we, you know what? As time goes on, we'll make omelets. Now, we're not going to do it next Sunday. Because no. next Sunday is December 23rd. And we're going to have a Christmas Eve day morning service. <laughs> Okay, because we don't have Christmas Eve service because over the years we it's like you can never find the right time frame. So I said, you know what, we're going to do our Christmas Eve service Christmas Eve Eve, which is Monday. But because we're having church Sunday, we're going to do it Sunday morning because people are busy. You know, they're busy. I know we shouldn't forsake the assembly. We should come and honor Jesus and all that. But people are traveling and everything. So we're going to have our Christmas Eve service next Sunday morning here. Candle lighting and everything. It'll all be worked out, all right? But seriously, we would love for you to stay after church and fellowship and get to know one another. Amen? Amen. And, and, and help us. All the Bible studies, Jody's, my wife's, and Gloria's. Are canceled till after the new year we'll fill you in when we're going to start them up again okay so you don't have to worry about that farmers markets going to uh, take a break and they got two more uh, weeks and then they're going to take a break and they're going to start back in April they're going to be one fellow is going to start at the beginning of April selling flowers out there for Easter and everything and he'll be there Thursday Friday Saturday and Sunday and then after that, as the weather permits, we have it narrowed the exact date down when we'll start on Thursdays again for the farmer's market. And we're going to have some new people out there, really good. Uh, Rose's Kitchen, man. If you like, if you like Latin food, you got to come and taste her food, man, because it is great. I'll tell you, really good stuff. Ask Billy. If you don't believe me, ask Billy. I've never seen anybody eat so many empanadas in my life. I can't eat the empanadas, but I eat the pulled pork. No problem. I said, put a lot of skin in that pulled pork, too. Because fat's your friend. All right. Okay. All right. Praise the Lord. The food pantry is still in need of necessities, so there's an updated necessities list out by the reception center. Uh, you can also contribute ShopRite gift cards in any denomination. Uh, that doesn't even sound right. Denomination. What, like your Catholic ones? Yeah. You know, <laughs> Presbyterian ones? No. You know what we're talking about. And, and continue to, home, to bring the Home Depot cards because, you know, you might not see things when you give it. You put your name on it. We let you know what we're doing. But there's little things that are done around here every all week long. So you could always bring a, a gift card in any, you know, any amount, okay? And then last but not least, if you have a, if you want to email us your praise reports and your prayer requests, prayer, praise at AbundantGraceChurch.com. And anything else you want to know, just go to AbundantGraceChurch.com on the web and everything is there. And one other thing we're doing, uh, we are looking to move our, our texting uh, to a different company. So I don't know if anybody got a text message from the church that said in church texting. Why did I was the only one in my wife that got it? I don't understand. I must have messed something up. Anyway, it's just uh, we're getting a better deal. There's a whole lot of other things we could do. It if I can get you the text messages, that would be great. Uh, well, we'll check it out. I'll see why. I'll send a text out again. So if you see something in your uh, box, that says in church texting. That's from us. There'll be a phone number under it. I believe it's at 848 244. I don't remember the other four numbers, but that's the number that you'll see coming up with it. Amen? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. God is good. Pastor Frank, I didn't want to.
steal all your time, but I did. All good. Then I'm 70. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good, right, guys? Well, you guys sound real excited. God is good, right, guys? All the time. So, um, you guys don't mind if I'm down here, right? My mother, my mother, when she was alive, would say it's because I want to see the whites of your eyes. The truth really is that I realize I'm anointed to preach the gospel, not to fly. So I push my luck on that platform. So I cannot, I cannot overcome the law of lift. So I thought it'd be a good idea if I'm down here because I can't fly. Amen. Um, how do you got your Bibles with you? You're in church. It's a good idea to have your Bible. It's also a good idea to write in your Bible. God will not be offended if you take notes in your Bible. Trust me. Um, one of my Bibles looks like my notes with Scripture, not a Bible with my notes. So it's okay to write in your Bibles. Um, what I want you guys to do, I want you to open up to two places. Just keep a finger in one or something like that. Um, I want you to open up to Jeremiah chapter 29 and Proverbs chapter 16. And while you guys are doing it, let's pray. Father God, I thank you for an opportunity to be here, Lord. I thank you for your word. I thank you that your word is alive, Father, and will point us in a direction of change today, Father. And as we, we hear your word, I ask that everybody here within the sound of my voice has supernatural ears to hear your word, a heart that's receptive, that it would take root and produce for us and for your kingdom, Father. And we thank you for it all in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So guys, here's what I've been thinking about. Um, it, it was kind of interesting. Me and Jody were sitting down having a conversation at the, the kitchen table, and she actually gave me the title of this message, and then God put the rest on my heart over the last couple of weeks. And what I was thinking about and looking at was, can you believe we are two weeks away from 2019? Where did 2018 go? You know, I'm sitting around going, didn't I just close my pool? You know, like, and here it is, it's Christmas, and, and time is flying. But time leading up to the return of Jesus Christ is flying. You know, we're in the end times. I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like time is moving quicker. Um, a lot of that has to do with us being busy. Uh, we talked about that when we did the um, little seminar last week. And don't worry, guys, I'm not getting into scheduling. Anybody want to talk about scheduling? You can see me individually. But... You know, two weeks from the end of the year, and I'm just like, wow. But then I started to think about something I like to do. And I don't know this, the, Bible's, the Bible talks about it a lot. Um, but maybe it's because of my background with me and my wife running the Celebrate Recovery Ministry, so a 12-step 12, you know, 12 Christian-based ministry. But I think it's really important to always continuously take a spiritual inventory of where we're at with our walk. Personally, I believe it's daily. You know, we need to take a daily spiritual inventory. But I think this time of the year is a good time to look back and just realize what, what happened in 2018. Not to camp out in the negative, but to just realize where am I at? You know, where am I in comparison to where I started the year? You know, did you hit your goals? Did you even have goals? Did circumstances happen? Did challenges happen? Are the challenges that started in 2018 or earlier still going on? You know, if you answered yes or no to any of those questions, this message is for you today. Because it's not just about if you have the best year ever. You could have the best year ever. And the Bible's pretty specific in the book of James about circumstances will come. Amen? Amen. Um, so, again, those two, two verses of Scripture I talked about. Let's start in, cha in Jeremiah chapter 29, and I want to start in verse 10. And this is the New Living Translation, and it says, This is what the Lord says. How many, how many of you know it's good to listen to what the Lord says? Amen. Amen. Amen? This is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised. And I will bring you home again. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you, and I will bring you home again to your own land. 
You know, maybe you are in the middle of a circumstance right now. I can tell you right now, I am. Be lying to you. I, I'm, I'm in the middle of multiple circumstances. Me and Jody turned around, you know. I am honored and humbled by being able to be an assistant pastor here at the church. But look out when that came along the pike after 10 years, because it was like the whole world just went wacky and haywire. I don't know if I'm the only one, but it certainly have. Me and Jody were sitting down, not to magnify the negative circumstances in our life, just to take a spiritual inventory of the year. And I was like, this year has been nuts, and it's continuing to be a little nuts, right? But maybe you feel like that thing you're dealing with is your 70 years in captivity in Babylon. Because I don't know about you, I go through something for 70 days, it feels like 70 years. You know, always. Because when we're under pressure, it seems like time isn't moving. Or it's moving too fast because we're up against the deadline that we're waiting on God for, right? Um, but this message... In Jeremiah chapter, in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah was ministering or preaching to the kingdom of Judah of their impending destruction. Mm -hmm. Now that impending destruction, they couldn't see coming. Why? Because they were pretty prosperous at the time. So imagine Jeremiah talking to the kingdom of Judah, go like, you guys are going to have issues, you're going to wind up in captivity in Babylon for 70 years, and they're like, no way. We're prosperous. But the bottom line was, what were they doing? They were pulling away from God, yeah. which was causing them this impending situation. So like I just said, I put out those questions out there. Maybe you guys answered that question, yes or no. I don't know. Maybe it's been a pretty good year. Either way, like I said, this message is for you today. So let's focus in specifically on one of my favorite verses of Scripture. No coincidence that Pastor Eddie prayed it this morning. And it's still in Jeremiah 29, but it's specifically verse 11. So let's look just at Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans, everybody say plans. Plan. I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for a good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Bottom line, if 2018 was terrible, and maybe you're not looking forward to 2019, because what happened in 2018? God has a plan for you. He has a plan to, of, for a future and a hope. Amen? So God has a plan. Hold on to that for a second. God has a plan. Now let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 16, and we're, I want to start in verse 1. Again, a living <laughs> translation. We can make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answers. People may be pure in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their motives, like Pastor was talking to you about giving this morning, right? Mm -hmm. Commit your actions to the Lord, and your plans will succeed. Yeah. The Lord has made everything for his own purposes, even the wicked for a day of disaster. The Lord detests the proud. They, they will surely be punished. Unfailing love and faithfulness make atonement for sin, but fearing the Lord, people avoid evil. When people's lives please the Lord, even their enemies are at peace with them. Better to have little with godliness than to be rich and dishonest. And verse 9, I want to finish with this. Once again, the word says, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. We have two Hebrew words there. In Jeremiah 29 and in the, in the scripture in Proverbs we just read for the word plant. They're two different words from the same Hebrew root word. So they're tied together. In Jeremiah, the, the word plans means thought. You know God thinks about you? Amen. He's already thought about you. And he says, you know what? I got a plan. He has, a, he has thought for you, he has a plan, and a purpose, and the word also means invention. I always thought this was kind of cool this morning, because it just hit me as I was reviewing my message. If I've got something I need in my life, and it doesn't exist, God will create it. Amen. He's a God of invention, right? And the Proverbs word, the Proverbs word for um, plans, diff different Hebrew words, same root words, means not exactly the same thing. It means to devise, think, and plan. So God has a plan, and we plan. Mm -hmm. 
Does that make sense to you guys? We plan and God has a plan. So basically, I, I, I said that to say, when we plan, God has a plan, and is your plan in sync with God's? Which could be, if you're out of sync, could be the reason why 2018 might have had some issues attached to it. Amen? Now, I want to tell you the title of the message. Some of you guys may have cheated already because I posted it on Facebook yesterday. But the title of the message today is, Are You Just Checking Off the Boxes? Amen? Ooh, it got quiet. You guys nervous? It's all good. I believe 100% when the, when the scripture tells us that we plan, and but God has a plan, that we as Christians need to lead a purpose life, a purposeful, purposely type of lifestyle. We've got a part to play. We're not, we're not designed by God to sit back and do nothing. Amen? And within God's plan, there's a divine order. And we were talking about this at the conference last Saturday, and it keeps coming up on the inside of me. I ministered on it, pastor ministered on it last Saturday at the conference. And what I want to look at today is living purposely within God's divine order. Amen? Do we, know, do we all know God's divine order? Because if you don't, I'm going to say it, and I will tell you point blank, when I started coming to the church... 11 years ago, I thought God's divine order was a little wacky, and I didn't know it. And I've known people that have gotten upset with God's divine order when it's preached here. But God's predetermined this order for a reason. And you know what that reason why he's predetermined it is because he has a plan. And his plan is the perfect plan, and it works. Amen? So God's order is, first, God. Second, spouse. Three, children and your family. Four, church. And five, work. And when I came 11 years ago in my banged up kind of situation that me and Jody were facing, I went, it was work. It was work. It was work. You know, and then everything else somehow fell in the mix, right? So God has a plan. And let's look at God's plan within his order. And look inside yourself. If anything hits you and says, I'm a little uncomfortable, that's God working on the inside saying, I, I want you to change. Amen? Amen? So number one, God. Are you reserving personal time with God each day? Christianity 101, right? But, and devotions too, you know? I have a routine. I'm sure you guys have a routine that spent time in the Word. But it sounds so fundamental, but I can't tell you how many times I run across Christians that lives are falling apart. I ask them one question first all the time. And the question is, how much time are you spending in the Word? And they'll tell me, well, and I know the answer before I ask the question. It's either not at all or not as much as I used to. And we wonder why we have no power over our circumstances when we've unplugged from the power source. Just like Jeremiah was talking to the kingdom of Judah. Hey, things were good. Well, the Bible tells us sin itself is pleasurable for a season, right? Things are good. They unplugged from God. Is unplugging from God sin if God's word says, draw near to me? Well, things were going good. They couldn't believe it, but they were in trouble. Amen? Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17 says, I love all who love me. Those who search me will find me. That word search, Hebrew word, which means diligently and earnestly. To seek early. For me, first place, putting God first place means I have to do it the first part of the day. I can't imagine starting my day without the word. Because why, like Pastor Eddie said, I'll be screaming at the same people he's screaming at on the parkway. No doubt. The world is nuts. Right? And it's getting crazier. Why? Because Jesus is coming. But God has a plan. Now, if you're not doing this, if you're getting up in the morning, and, and this is what I want to talk about living purposely. Are you getting up in the morning, or sp whatever time you spend time in the Word, and I encourage you to do it first place in the day. Seek me diligently, and seek me early. Early means early. Right? 
Why? I mean, if you think about it, why would you read in the afternoon after everything's gone haywire? Right? That's just my thought, right? But when you do read, are you sitting there just reading for the sake of reading? Or are you digging in deep? Or are you just checking off the box? Yep, read the word today. But are you really reading? God dealt with me this a couple of months ago, a month or so ago. Not that I was going through the motions, but it was time for a new level. So now I'm actually doing like a study every morning, not just reading the word. But are you just checking the box? Just to say, yep, read my book, yep. Spent to, you know, read my Bible, spent time in prayer, read my couple of devotionals, and that was it. I'm done. First place means first place. Seek me diligently and seek me early. You know, if God has a plan for us, like we just said, you guys all believe God has a plan? Yes. How do we know his plan if we're not seeking his plan for our lives? Right? Yes. You know, he's not gonna he's not gonna say, you know what? They're not getting it. I'm going to give them, or I'll just send them an email with all the steps that they need to go through. Like MapQuest used to be for directions. I'll give you a MapQuest of my plan, and you follow this plan, you guys are good to go. No, because our walk is about faith. Amen? And you're not going to necessarily see step number two. You're going to see step number one first. And me and Jody were talking actually also about um, the Israelites crossing the Jordan, how God just dried it up one step at a time for them. But that was a second opportunity, because the first one, God gave them, a, a, gave them a, a break. You know, when Moses parted the Red Sea, it was completely done. And then God said, nope, time for a new level. Now you have to exercise your faith and step one foot at a time. Amen? Amen. How do we know God's plan if we don't seek his plan by spending time in the Word. Now, we all know God is good. God loves us, so His plan must be good. But He has a specific plan for you. You need to fulfill the plan of God, the will of God for your life. And it's bigger than you think it is right now. I'll tell you right now, if God gave you the ending, you could wrap your head around it. That's why He doesn't do it that way. Because you'd have to reason out your own strength. I have no idea how I'm going to get there. Amen? Remember this, we just talked about God's divine order, but before God ever created the church, he created the family. Before God ever created the family, he created the marriage. And before God ever created anything, he was. That's why he's first place in our lives. Amen? Amen. Now, I might back up to this one. Your spouse. We covered God, your spouse. Don't get mad at me. This is God's word. You can take it up with, with God. But after God, are you allowing anything to come between you and your spouse? As Christians, we should be constantly applying biblical principles, obviously, to our marriage, which give us a foundation of what marriage was meant to be. And it's certainly... So much better than unbelievers and our neighbors. And our marriages, when they're operated by biblical principles, will get people saved. They see us. You label yourself a Christian. What does the Bible say? You're an epistle known and read of men. You put your life on exhibit as soon as you profess to be an ex a Christian. And that's the same thing for your marriage. You know, me and Jody are Christians. We go to Abundant Grace Church. They might not say anything to you, but they're watching you. Amen? Our actions do speak louder than words. You want to get somebody saved? Tell them God is good, God loves them, leave it at that, and then show them through your actions. And that goes for your marriage as well. Matthew chapter 19, we read verses 4 and 6 here. Haven't you read the scriptures, Jesus replied? They record that from the beginning, God made them male and female, and he said, this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Since they are no longer two but one, let, let, no, let no one split apart what has, God has joined together. 
If you are a married couple here today, are you letting anything that God has joined together, meaning you and your spouse, to come between and split it up? And I got a newsflash. That can even be your children or your grandchildren. Yes. I think Pastor said this last Saturday. Are you allowing that five-year-old to be in your bed with you? Right? Too many times we find ourselves being the ones splitting our own marriage. Here's some questions I want to ask you. Are you, as a couple, and, and this, is, this can go for dating too, it's the same thing. Because what are you doing when you're dating? You're preparing for marriage. Amen? Are you pursuing the things of God together? I'm going to call myself out. Um... I got saved back in 2005, 13 years ago. Jody got saved, I think, back in 2001. Am I right? Somewhere around there. Um, but when I, we first started coming here, I walked straight out of the denominational church, Catholic church, right into this place, thought you were all nuts. <laughs> Realized I became one of the bigger nuts. <laughs> so with all that to say, that um, I didn't get it. You know, she got it way ahead of me, and I was lagging behind, like way far behind. So if you are, that's okay, because that can change today. Thank but God. my question to you is, are you pursuing the things of God together? Are you both all in? Now, don't think for one second, if you are both all in or about to be both all in, that the devil's going to leave you guys alone. Christian marriages have power. Power. I was thinking about this scripture. It was actually a message we heard when we were somewhere a while ago. And it was talking about following the faith. You know, as an example of the faith of those who came before you. Right? Strong Christian marriage, Pastor and Carol. Strong Christian marriage, Pastor Eddie and Militia. Me and Jody, a strong Christian marriage. But when you're saying you're all in for God and serving God together, you have a huge bullseye on your back. And you know what? That's okay. Why? Because God has a what? A plan. We win. You know, sometimes when you're stretching spiritually, it doesn't feel good. We were talking about pruning last night. You know, I, we believe we're in a season of pruning. And it doesn't feel good. I don't like it. But it's going to change us. Amen. So, are you pursuing the things of God together? Are you all in? If not, like I said, you could change that today. And again, trust me, I was not all in. Used to make her crazy, and she'll tell you. If you want, I think part of it's in the book. Is it? Yeah. God has designed marriage for partnership, spiritual intimacy, and the ability to pursue God together. Now, you know the old saying, opposites attract? I believe for a good, strong marriage, opposites attract. Oh. Why is that? Because every area I'm strong in, she's weak. Every area she's weak in, I'm strong. What does that do? Make us complete together in Christ. Amen. What's that? Amen. Yeah, well, you guys got the gist, right? Where I'm strong, she's weak. Where she's strong, I'm weak. There you go. I guess I don't like saying I'm weak. <laughs> Try. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And, and we, I say this all the time. She refused in our marriage vows when pastor married us, that, that married us there had to be that verse of, of scripture in Ecclesiastes where it says a threefold cord is easily broken. Because it's you, your wife, or your spouse, your husband, and Jesus. That's it. Perfect marriage. But it only starts when you put God first. If she ever told me I'm putting you first in my life, I'd be like, nope, you're wrong. You're out of order. I don't want to be first. Because our marriage is strengthened by her not being first and vice versa. Ladies, I'm going to read something to you. I remember reading this verse of scripture when I married my stepson. And uh, ladies weren't real happy until I read this, what I'm going to read in a bit. So hang in here. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21 through 24. And further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. For wives, this means to submit to your husbands as to the Lord. Don't. 
snarl. For a husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is head of the church. He is the savior of his body, the church. Hallelujah. As the church submits to Christ, so your wives should submit to your husbands and everything. Well, what does that really mean for us as Christians? That means when we do that, we are, we are following God's order of a biblical marriage, or the principle behind the structure of a biblical marriage, which makes the husband, or puts the husband in a position of prophet, priest, and king. Hang on. Don't get upset. Hang on. What does the prophet do? He represents and seeks God for his wife and his family. Guys, listen up. We miss this more than you can ever imagine. I miss this for a long time. Actually, before we were married, not when we were married. But you are to represent God to your wife and family and seek God's plan for the family. Amen? As the priest, you minister to the spiritual needs of the family by doing what? Spending time in the Word. See step one. We miss it. Because why? We've been trained as men differently than what the Word of God says. If you didn't grow up in the church... You probably never got a hold of it early, because I didn't, right? So as a priest, you're ministering to the spiritual needs of the family through spending time with God in prayer. And as the king, you are the protector. Had an opportunity to have to do that in Atlantic City at a convention two weeks ago. Hated every minute of it, but I did it anyway. Don't touch my wife. Break your legs, pray for your healing, but don't touch my wife. That did happen. Amen. So ladies, the reality is, well, let me read this. This is, this is a, a little commentary I found years ago um, when we started doing the armor bearer class. This is what I believe sums up pretty good your godly submission and what it means. And after this, when I read this, when I married my stepson and my daughter-in-law, then the lady smiled. Okay, you ready? A wife is to submit to one man, her husband, not every man. The rule to submit does not extend to a woman's place in society at large. A wife is to willingly submit to her husband in personal obedience to the Lord Jesus. She submits to her husband because she loves Jesus. The example of a wife's submission is that of the church to Christ. There is nothing said of the wife's abilities, talents, or worth. The fact that she submits to her own husband does not imply that she is inferior or less worthy in any way. Amen. Also notice that there are no qualifiers to the command to submit except in everything. So the husband does not have to pass an aptitude test or an intelligent test before his wife submits. It may be a fact, and this is true, and I see it all the time, and it was in my own life as well, it may be a fact that she is better qualified than him to lead in many ways. But she chooses to follow the Lord's instruction by submitting to her husband, her husband's leadership. In so doing, a godly wife can even win her unbelieving husband to the Lord without words, simply by her holy behavior. Amen. Think about that. That's powerful. Ladies, you guys are powerful. But the other side of authority is always submission, right? Guys, like I said, if you don't know what I'm talking about and none of this resonates to you, it's time to do what we just said in, in putting God first place. Spend more time in the Word. Because this is your godly duty to be the head of your household. Do not allow your wife to be the head of the household. She's the teacher in the household. Amen? When we allow our wives to, when we allow our wives to assume that role, we ourselves suffer. Amen? Now, are you communicating inside your marriage? Are you guarding your marriage? Are you still dating? You know what? We, we talk about being out of order. One of the things I see biggest inside the, the church, marriage, and family is having the kids like going crazy with everything and sports, and that's all okay. You know, Pastor Eddie was alluding to last week about not playing football on Sunday. I would have been upset. I didn't play football until high school, but I would have been upset if I couldn't play baseball on Sunday, I'll be honest, right? 
Um, my kids played sports, but we weren't churchgoers back then when they were younger. That's my bad. But um, are, are you still continuing to date your wife? And if you say, well, we don't have time, that's a problem. Get a sitter. You guys need to date. You courted. Old school term, but it's true. You courted, you dated, you spent time together, you talked, you loved on each other. Leave the cell phones. I, we, me and Jody put our cell phones in her purse unless there's an emergency going on. I could still, after how many years together? 15? 14? 14? I can still spend hours and hours talking to her. But that doesn't happen if we stopped talking. We've got to continue to date each other. You know, Jesus talks about it in Revelation, about losing your first love, which is Jesus. But I believe a lot of times that could be our love for each other because we're not spending quality time with each other. I know everything about her. Why? I take the time to know her. No different than I take the time to know God in his first place position in my life. Do you spend time together and are you of one accord? Amen? Amen. Or, once again, are you just checking off the boxes? Yeah. You know, I see too many of this, right? Husband and wife, long day, kids are home, or went to bed or whatever, and instead of maybe spending some time just talking, or maybe extra time and double time in the Word, it's this. Oh, yeah. hmm. And then she's talking, and this happens to me too, I'm, I'm tired, I get it sometimes, and she's talking to me and I'm just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, and then two days later, I'll ask her, like, hey, whatever happened with so-and-so? She goes, I told you the other night. I'm completely checked out. And you know what? That's wrong. That's right. That's wrong. <laughs> amen? Yes, amen. This was actually, a lot of this, it was funny. You, everybody read our devotional? Yeah. A lot of what I'm ministering on was the last two days in the devotional. I don't know how that happened. It was pretty cool. But this, is, this was out of our de devotional yesterday was marriage is not 50-50. It's 100 and 100. Each party giving 100% in the way God's ordained the structure to be. Amen? All right. Let's move on to children and family. My question for you today is if you have children, are you ministering to the financial, physical, and spiritual need of your children God's way? You know, I encourage everybody in here that has children, read the book of Proverbs. It is an instruction manual for training children. Children want structure. They want parents. Friendship comes later. You know, my kids now, in, you know, 24, about to be 24, about to be 20. Now, still their father, some of the stuff's been able to be taken down a little bit because they're leading their own lives. And in a lot more ways, I can be their friend. But they want a parent. And a parent doesn't always say yes all the time. Amen? Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6 says, Direct your children unto the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. Amen? It's our job as parents to meet their, and I believe everybody in here is meeting your financial and physical needs of your, your children, but are you meeting their spiritual needs? I love our children's department here at the church. And our youth, they do a great job. It's not our job to teach your children. It's our job to give you instruction and teach you to teach them. You are raising up the next generation of Christian leadership. Amen. I'm 52 years old. I can't believe it. It happened yesterday. I'm not getting younger. Pastor Eddie's not getting any younger. He's a little bit younger than me. Pastor Anthony's not getting any younger. You guys are training up the next spiritual leaders here at Abundant Grace Church. Amen. Think about that every time your, your child asks you a question about church or God. Are you running to your word to sit down with them together with the word of God to instruct them? Or you're phoning a friend using a lifeline? It's our job as parents to spiritually minister to our children. I'll never forget it when my daughter left for boot camp for the Navy. Anybody been, have a child that went to boot camp, they'd go with the clothes on their back and their cell phone, and the clothes come home in a box called, she's in the Navy, so it's a sailor in a box, and the phone comes home. The only thing they allowed her to keep were other, were, were up, no, it wasn't even her clothes. Her clothes came home, cell phone came home, the only thing she was allowed to keep was her Bible. 
And I am so glad we had gotten to that point in her where she got saved, was reading the word every day, you know, because she wound up in the Middle East and that was protection she needed. Amen. So that's what I got about family, right? It's our job as parents to minister to the spiritual needs of our children. Now, number four, church. Are you only coming to church when you feel like it and just checking off the box? <laughs> I was, Pastor alluded to it too this morning about making it too easy for people with technology not to come to church, right? And I, no coincidence, I have the same verse of scripture in my message. Hebrew chapter, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Are you coming to church just when you feel like it? You know, I guarantee there's people that are not here today because the weather ain't so good. That is not a reason not to come to church. You know what that shows me, to be honest with you guys, is that you're going to church just to check off the box, not coming excited, expecting to receive something that's life-changing. God has a plan. It comes from where? The, by hearing the word? And what else? By hearing the word? And hearing the word? And hearing the word? My life has entirely changed by being hooked into this church day after day after day. We've only been in Tom's River a year and a half. We were coming from Homedale for 10 years. Wow. Do you think I got up in the morning sometimes and wanted to drive 45 minutes to come to church? And then we were teaching like the armor bearer class at 8.30, which means I have to leave my house at 7.30? No, but why? Because God's word and this church is life changing. Amen. Come in expecting. To, too many people don't expect to receive. And if you don't expect to receive, you know what you get? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I'll use pastor's line. Like it or lump it, it's the truth anyway. Right? Come expecting. Come excited. Pray before you walk through this door. Lord, give me something I can hold on to and apply to my life. Because God's word is for today. Amen. Right? The, the, the Amen. ministering that comes forth from this pulpit, no matter who it is, guest speakers, is practical application for your life today. Amen. Amen. Receive it. Jesus. Amen? Amen. Yes. Take notes. Go crazy. You know, go crazy with notes. Because why? You can't remember it all. Nope. Ink it, don't think it. Right? Man. Jody's the best note taker. We have stacks of notes. Now, part of God's plan, I believe 100% for you, is to be here at Abundant Grace. Because why? We God plans and we plan. And it's time that some of us start planning to be here in some areas. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. We'll start in verse 1. Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Say, I've been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace, for there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. However, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. God was so generous that Jesus has given you a special gift. That's part of your plan. Now, if you don't know what that is yet, that's why you have to go back to step one. Spend time in the Word and let God show you what the plan is. Did I walk through these doors 11 years ago and know what that plan was? Nope. 
Did I know God had a call on my life? Yeah, it took me a while to get hooked back in here to realize and reconfirm that call because I had went so far away. But you are here today for a purpose. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16 says it this way. He makes the whole body. We're the body. Fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. What Pastor was alluding to this morning, you know, people not being in church, and we've got the Mata Cafe going on. Do you know part, part of your part to play is not only getting hooked into one of the ministries inside the church, it's to help each other, right. to encourage one another, yeah. to be here for each other. Yeah. And we have, like the scripture says, each one of us, has been given a gift so it all works together perfectly. You may be the person, and I'm not, this is not putting anybody under condemnation, this is just a little conviction maybe in your heart that says, maybe you're holding up our perfectly. <laughs> maybe, you got, maybe you're that person that is the last piece of the puzzle here for this place to explode and let the word go forth everywhere. Amen? Amen? You could be that perfectly. Don't neglect the spiritual gifts that Christ has given you out of his generosity. Man, we serve such a great God. You know, you guys can read on your own. You know, if you want to read a little bit more about where we fit and, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you know, verse 12 through 28, man, go read it. Read it about how we are all so many parts and how we all work together. Amen. All right. Are you just checking off the boxes here at the church when it comes to your giving? Guys, I'm not saying any of this to get into your pocket, because I will tell you 100% that I know that leadership here at the church know that God is our source. Amen. We know that. The reason why we encourage you to give is for your own financial prosperity, not ours. You know, I didn't tithe when I first came here, to be honest with you. I told you, I walked right out of a denominational church in here. The only other, I never, never went to any other Christian church that I called the home church. Me and Jody didn't church bounce around. We came here, we stayed here. Why? Because we knew we were supposed to be here. Even in my condition in those days, I knew I was supposed to be here. Because my story and pastor story resonated. And the praise and worship, I liked so that kind of got me hooked in here, and we've never done anything. But I didn't talk. 10%. That's crazy to me. And I would, I would tell you point blank. We would come every Wednesday. We'd come every Sunday. I would give $40 each service at the beginning, right? And then God just started to work on me, man. And she was working on me, right? And she'd be like, look, look, at, look at Malachi chapter 3. It's right in there. And I was getting stubborn. I'm like, oh, praise God. They don't need my money. You know, the Catholic Church doesn't preach it. They come down with the things and people through changing. Please, let's not go there, okay? But 40 bucks every service, right? That was it. And then she couldn't minister to me because that's another thing about husband and wife. Sometimes sometimes we have a hard time receiving from each other. That's why you need to come to church and be around, you know, good, solid leadership and teaching. But she was dealing with me about tithing. And then finally, I, I don't know, it was Brother Hagen's article in the Word of Faith magazine or Pastor Hagen's article about living abundantly in your giving. I got a hold of that, and it was like a light bulb went on. And I will tell you that me and Jody um, endeavor every year to outgive the year before. As for us, it's not just about tithing. It's about offerings as well. You know, we have a giving account that we set aside. We kind of got off track with that for, I don't remember what happened, but now we're back on track with that. And, you know, and again, I'm not talking about, um, you, you know, well, uh, it doesn't seem to make sense right now, so we can't do it. It's never going to make sense. Why? Is our walk with God about absolutes that we know that we know that we know that we should do something? Yeah, with the word says it, that's your absolute, but it takes faith. Amen. Giving takes faith. And we talk about and teach about giving for you guys, not us. Because why? God's our source. Amen. You know, I, I always thought, you know, you, there's a, probably a good chance that the angel Gabriel is not going to come down with a sack of money and drop it on your porch today. 
although I've given him my address and it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> but I'm talking about giving where you are right now. Amen? Your financial breakthrough is contained within your giving. If you're believing for finances, and one of the struggles you mentioned for 2018 is your finances, your financial breakthrough is contained and in direct correlation to your giving. You say, nope, well, I got two scriptures for you. Actually, it's the same scripture in two versions. Ready? 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 says, Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but one who plants generously will get a generous crop. And I like the way the Amplified Classic Addiction says it. Remember this. He who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. And he who sows generously that blessings may come to someone will also reap generously and with blessings. Now, you guys hear my wife every day when somebody says it's time to honor the Lord with your giving. She does not give grudgingly, nor do I. She's just more vocal than I am. She gets a ladle out. She gets a ladle out all the time. Take a giving inventory this year. Don't just have that check off the box mentality of, I'm just throwing it in. Because that expectation of that seed you sow, it produces. Have it, once again, just like coming to church, you should be expecting to receive something. When you give out of a good, pure heart, with a motive of God's word says to give, I love God, I want to honor God, it's his anyway, he gave it to me, you can't help but be blessed. But guess what? Your blessing isn't just about you. It's about other people in the church. God needs to get it to you to get it through you. The word says, keep men. Meaning people will give into our bosom. Amen? Amen? And let's wrap this up with, last but not least, work. Do you, wherever you work, give 110% where you're at, despite what you feel about your job or who you work for? Or are you just checking off the box? Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 and 24 says, Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Amen. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward. Amen. And that the master you are serving is Christ. Amen. I don't care if your boss is coming at you, your co-workers are coming at you. 110% with a smile on your face working for Christ. I can guarantee you, I've always had the mindset, even when I wasn't saved, of giving 110% of the people I work for. And before I had my own business, I treated the person who I worked for before me, where I started my industry, gave him 110%, treated like his business was my own. Within three years, I opened up my own. But because I treated his business like it was mine. Never had to question me in anything. Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Did you take care of this? He just knew. The irony was, when I left, he was not happy about me doing my own thing. But that's not my problem, right? All my thing was, while I was hooked in with him there, was to give him 110%. Amen? Amen. That's right. You can come up here if you're ready. Um, just remember this. That very job you have today, that task, you have to do at work, that you despise doing, is most likely part of God's plan, and you're treating it like a curse rather than a blessing. We all have, I, I got a news flash for you. I've been in my industry for 25 years. I am not in love with the mortgage industry. I'm in love with ministry, but I'm not there yet, right? And I, I think I alluded to this, that Saturday conference, my business coach, made my life so much easier when he said stop looking at yourself as a branch manager of a mortgage company and start looking at yourself as a minister who just happens to do mortgages. You are all ministers of the gospel. You're all called here, what we said, by Christ's generosity with a gift. And your work that you don't like, or maybe you do like it, but you feel like you're, you're more. There's more. Get in God's word. Get his plan. 
Amen. Give 110% where you're at. We have a part to play. We plan our way, but we have to allow God to direct our steps because he's got a bigger plan. Amen? Amen. God's word says that he'll bless the work of our hands and the fruits of our labor. But how can we if we don't give him anything to work with? Amen. Amen. Psalm uh, 128 verse 2 says, you will enjoy the fruit, you will enjoy the, the fruit of your labor. How joyful and prosperous you will be. But all of this, everything I've talked about today has to do with God's plan for us. And the fact that we need to live purposely. Getting busy doing something. You know, I remember Bob Yandian was here and he was talking about young people getting married. And they said, look, if you're waiting for your, your, your partner to come along, your life partner, your, your future spouse, get busy doing something for God. You're waiting for your promotion at work and you're dealing with a, a boss or co-workers that are rough. Get busy doing something for God. Just because maybe you guys don't get along doesn't mean you can't minister to them. You know, I'll guarantee you, if you put a smile on your face, you positive, you're upbeat because the love of God is inside you and it's exuded through you, sometime that person that's nasty you is going to say, hey, I'm going through something. Can you pray for me? Where you're at right now, even if it's not where you want to be at and it's uncomfortable, is still part of God's plan. Amen? Amen. Amen. We have a proactive life. Christianity is proactive, not reactive. Amen? And we need to live purposely. Too often we wonder why God isn't moving in our lives, and it's because we're not moving ourselves. Amen? I hope you guys got something today. Let's pray. But before I do that, before I pray out, with every eye, with every head bowed, every eye closed, we never want to close the service without giving an invitation. So, if you, if you say, Pastor Frank, I don't know what you're even talking about with God's plan and His order and, and all these things you ministered on today. Maybe it's because you're just not there yet. You don't have a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's where it starts. It's personal. It's one-on-one -on -one with you and God. And like Pastor Eddie always says, maybe you've been coming to this church for years, but you just don't know if you're saved. You've never prayed a prayer. You've never made a public profession. We want to give you an opportunity today. God has a plan for each and every one of you here today, and that plan is an awesome plan, a plan to prosper you, a plan for a hope and a future. And if you want that, that, that relationship with Jesus, that one-on-one, -on -one, you and him today, and you've never done that before, we want you to slip up your hand, and we want to make that right today, and we want, we want to pray with you. So if that's you, you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, lift up your hand a couple more seconds. All right, so everybody here saved? Amen. Do we all know God has a great plan for us? Yes. Do we maybe have some areas that we need to work on for 2019? Yes.